Hello students, now we have come to the end of unit 3, a poem about a mystery cat, Makavity. Open your textbooks, Honeydew and page 50 to read through the poem. As the title already tells us, the poem is about a cat, in fact about a mysterious cat. And now we have some questions coming out in our mind, some common questions. Do you like cats or do you have some pets at your home? If so, have you ever wondered why are pets so close to human beings? Animals always have some of the human traits, which is why when we show them some love, they know to reciprocate it back to us. And isn't that the reason why there is a bonding between both of us? Yes. That is why animals are very close, especially pet animals are very close to we human beings. If you observe some people using the name of certain animals in order to describe our characteristics or personal traits, then you get to know that there is some sense of similarities to the nature of animals and as well as human beings. Let me give you some examples. If you have dogs or cats or rabbits, you get to understand this better. How are dogs usually described as? Dogs are usually called friendly, like cats are usually called grumpy and rabbits are hyperactive. If you have them, you know it. And when it comes to fish, fishes are tranquil and so on and so forth. It keeps going like that for almost all the pets. Here is one such cat with unique characteristics and this that is when a human characteristic is given to something non-human then the particular process of transformation is called as personification. I will tell you the definition all again, listen to it and try to understand it better. The attribution of certain human characteristics to something non-human is called personification. Yeah? Yes. Now, you have to start registering this term and use it in your future references as well as remember it for your future poems. Understood? Yes. Now, students, open your textbook Honeydew and page number 50 in it to read the poem Macavity, A Mystery Cat. This poem is written by T.S. Eliot and now, Let's go through the first stanza of the poetry. Read along with me. Remember, read it aloud to understand it better. Makavati's a mystery cat. He is called the hidden paw. For he is the master criminal who can defy the law. He is the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. For when they reach the scene of crime, Makavati is not there. Here, in the first stanza, the poet is trying to introduce us to a fictional and an imaginary character called Makavati. And as I have already told you, the cat is here personified with the villainous character of a human being. And when you go through the line, Makavati is a mystery cat, he is called the hidden paw. So why is he called a hidden paw? He is called a hidden paw. Finding Makavity has been a futile effort from the most powerful police forces in the world. The important line of stanza 1 that is, Makavity is here called a hidden paw. Why is Makavity called a hidden paw? He is called so because look at the next line. For he is the master criminal who can defy the laws. He is the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. So you have some two, three words that are unknown to you here. The first word of your glossary is defy. And the meaning of defy is to disobey or resist openly. So here if you read along with the meaning of the word, you get to know that Makavati is a master criminal who can defy the human made laws and then abscon from the strongest police squads like Scotland Yard and then the flying squads of London. And despair, if you do not know the word 
meaning of despair. So look through the meaning for the word despair in a dictionary. And if you see the last line of stanza 1, you can know that when the polar squads, the strongest polar squads like Scotland Yards are there in the crime scene, McAvity goes missing because McAvity knows how to abscond since he is a mysterious cat. Stay with me students as the most mysterious part of the McAvity cat is yet to unfold. Now let's move on to stanza 2 in order to know more about the McAvity. Read along with me and remember read aloud as well. McAvity McAvity there is no one like McAvity. He has broken every human law. He breaks the law of gravity. His powers of levitation would make a fakir stare. Look at these interesting lines about McAvity. Here in the second stanza, the poet tries to highlight the characteristics of McAvity. And what are his characters? If you see the first very line of stanza 2, the poet tries to emphasize the fact that McAvity is so unique and there is nobody like McAvity. McAvity is somebody who has a special trait of absconding mysteriously as quickly as possible from the crime scene. So if you go to the line 2, there are two things you have to concentrate about there. And the first one is said that he is able to break every human law. What does a human law mean? Human law is some law or a social restriction or constraint or rule made by humans to be followed by each and every one. So here, if you see, McAvity is able to defy all the human laws. That is, he does not follow any rules and regulations set by the government. And the next one, if you see, he is able to break the law of gravity. Not just the laws made by humans, but McAvity is also able to break the nature's law. What is the nature's law here? Nature's law, as mentioned here, is the law of gravity. And Isaac Newton's law of gravity, very roughly, to state it very roughly, means every particle in the universe is attracted to every other particle. Yeah, I repeat, is roughly stating every particle in the universe is attracted to every other particle. And when you connect it to McAvity, McAvity is a cat who does not get caught by anybody. Look at the next line here. His powers of levitation would make a fakir stare. What is levitation? According to your glossary, look at the glossary. The fourth word in your glossary is levitation and the meaning of it is floating in the air without support. And when will you be usually able to do that? You will be able to do that when you have some special powers. And in the yogic form of life, it is believed that continuous meditation and a control of your body, the balanced form of control of your body will make you or help you reach that level of balancing your body in the air. And such people need serious dedication and extra power among themselves in order to create that effect. So here, such levitations, McAvity has such power of levitations, which means that he is not at all very normal like any one of us. And this particular thing would make a fakir. Who is a fakir? A fakir is a self-reliant religious person who lives on alms. Okay, I repeat, a fakir is a religious self-reliant person who lives on alms. Is that right? Yes. And when you say that a person who is so religiously self-reliant, the person is able to handle everything without any worldly pleasures or astonishment. But here, McAvity's powers, especially of levitation, is very astounding to the fakir himself. Look at the next four lines of stanza 2. That is the last four lines of stanza 2. And when you reach the scene of crime, McAvity is not there. You may seek him in the basement, you may look up in the air. But I tell you once and once again, McAvity is not there. So here, 
the poet uses the stress on the same line saying whenever you reach the crime scene wherever you search the macavity for for example wherever you search macavity for be it the basement like the next line suggests be it the basement which is either a place the downmost place of a building so even if you try to find macavity beneath the earth or above look at the next continuation of the same line there you may look up in the air already in the previous few lines we have learned that macavity is capable of levitation that is floating in the air so even if he knows the art of floating in the air when you look up for macavity in the air he is not there he is missing from the entire crime scene so here the poet again is emphasizing or reemphasizing to us saying that macavity wherever you go wherever you see either up above on the sky or below or beneath the earth wherever you see macavity is missing he is not to be seen anywhere i am assuming you are all with me again in order to know more about the mysterious cat macavity now let's go to the third stanza of the poem read along with me and then see what is to unfold about the macavity macavity is a ginger cat he is very tall and thin you would know him if you saw him for his eyes are sunken in his brow is deeply lined with thought his head is highly domed here entirely in stanza 3 the poet tries to describe the appearance of the macavity cat so if you look through the lines 1 and 2 macavity is a ginger cat what's a ginger cat you might be wondering what is this to do with a ginger and a cat right yes it's not altogether the same ginger cat is a breed of cat which is usually the breeds you see on streets that is thin and long so here especially in this poem macavity is seen to be thin and tall like every other assumption of a criminal so the next line which says you would know him if you saw him for his eyes are sunken in here the poet is telling us that macavity amongst all other common people is easily recognizable as a criminal because his eyes are sunken that is it's all deep into some mysterious or villainous thinking all the time and when you go to the next line his brow is deeply lined with thought his head is highly domed he is saying the poet is telling us that his brows are always in a position like this where he is deeply in thought strategizing certain things to move into a criminal sector so macavity's criminal brain is always on the verge of process of thinking and rethinking and strategizing for new crimes that is why the poet says that he is very much recognizable among us but yet macavity is the only person whom we cannot find anywhere in the crime scene look at the next four lines to be followed in the same stanza his coat is dusty from neglect his whiskers are uncombed he sways his head from side to side with movements like a snake and when you think he's half asleep he's always wide awake here the poet goes on to a deeper description of the appearance of macavity look at the first line where he is saying that his coat is dusty from neglect which means that macavity is a cat who does not care about the clothing at all he is as ignorant as possible and as free will to go anywhere the way he is shabbily dressed so in the next one if you see he says the next part of the same line he says his whiskers are uncombed so when you are saying that his whiskers are uncombed it means that there is no part of self grooming for macavity he is as negligent as possible as his brain is only thinking about what is the process of the next crime so he does not give much of importance to his appearance is what the poet is trying to tell us here look at the next line he sways his head from side to side with movements like a snake 
So why is there a special mention of a snake here? Because snake, when it's moving its head from side to side, is said to be very actively thinking and wanting to go for hunting its food, right? And that is why it's a special mention here saying Makavati is like that snake which is wanting to go on for hunting and grabbing something for his stomach or probably for his satisfaction. And that is why Makavati is always somebody who is into some deep processing or thoughts. Look at the last line of the stanza and when you think he is half asleep, he is always wide awake. So this tells us a special characteristic of Makavati that Makavati is somebody who is totally unpredictable and who is pretending all the time. That is, Makavati might not be sleeping at all. He might look like he is asleep, but then he is always half asleep, which means that he is still conscious of whatever is going on around him. Right? That is what says the last line of this particular stanza. We have now come to the last part of the poem. Now, Let's read the last stanza of the poem. I'm sure you remember to read aloud with me. Macavity, Macavity, there's no one like Macavity. For he is a fiend in feline shape, a monster of depravity. You may meet him in by a street, you may see him in by the square. But when a crime's discovered, then Macavity is not there. Yes. The last part of the poetry tells you a very different perspective, at least in the last two sentences. So let's see what it says. So in the beginning, when you are saying, the poet is completely summing up the entire narrative of the poetry to us. Again, re-emphasizing that Makavati is somebody who is very unique and somebody who cannot be caught by any one of us. So when you look at the first line, Makavati, Makavati, there's no one like Makavati, saying that there's nobody as equivalent to Makavati because he is certainly unique and perhaps the only possible criminal who can be defying all the laws in order to abscond. For he is a faint and feline shape. This is a very tough line as there are two different words or difficult words for you to comprehend. The first word, faint, which is the fifth word in your glossary, read through it. The meaning of it is devil and the second word in the same line is felon. The sixth word of your glossary, read through the meaning of it. It says of or relating to a cat. Here, now read the entire line along with the meanings given in the glossary. It says for he is a devil in a cat's shape, right? When you read it along with the meanings given there, he is a devil in a cat's shape, a monster of depravity. What is depravity? Depravity in your glossary, the last word, meaning of it is moral corruption. So here they are giving us a lot of adjectives for Macavity. So the adjectives are like this, that he is a devil in the shape of a cat and then he is a monster corrupting all the moral values in the society. So Makavati is considered demonish or devilish because of the things that he does and absconds because going against a law set by either all the society or by the nature is completely unbearable. Isn't it? Yes. So when you go to the next line of the same stanza, you see, you may meet him in a by street, you may see him in the square. This particular line is completely different when compared to the rest of the lines in the poem. Because in the rest of the lines, the poet has not given any reference to call you or me out together there. But here, in this particular line, you can see that the poet is slightly warning us. How is the poet warning us? He is warning us, saying that this sort of a Makavati, who is a monster for moral corruption, who is a devil in the shape of a cat. Here, it is necessarily not supposed to be a shape of the cat. It's a symbolic representation telling you that a monster can be 
in any shape for you to come and defy laws and create troubles. So the poet is warning us, telling us that there can be anyone amidst you when you are just passing by the streets or even if the criminal is just walking beside you or sitting beside you, you may not be knowing it. So that is why the poet is telling all of us that the criminal could be one among us. The criminal could be easily walking like a common person beside us in our surrounding and still you may not know who it is. And that's how clever and witty Makaviti is. Right? Let's look at the last line of the stanza. But when a crime's discovered, then Makaviti is not there. So again, as I said, Makaviti is so witty and so villainous that in spite of doing so many things, in spite of trying to find where the criminal is, Makaviti has his own ways to escape. And here, since he is just among us and still we are not able to figure out, Makavati is brilliantly playing his game. And for how long? We wouldn't know that. So please be careful about Makavati's around you. Now children, I am sure you all have a notepad by your side. Pick it up as now we are going to start working with the poem. And in case you don't have a textbook, make sure that you read the questions that will appear on the screen and after a period of gap you will receive the answers too as we discuss the answers please make sure that you also work along with me children hope you are ready with your pencils and papers now i am assuming you can easily attend question number 1 since it's a very simple question though it appears on your screen Look at the question, read through it and solve carefully. Let's go to question number 2, which asks us to complete some sentences. So, I would repeat only the answers and the options for questions will appear on your screen. Look at it and start solving. Answer for the first blank. A master criminal is one who evades arrest and escapes from the scene of crime. So, the answer is evades arrest and escapes from the scene of crime. So let's go to the second answer. The Scotland Yard is baffled because it fails to get a clue about the criminal. Answer 3. Flying squad is not able to catch hold of him because Makavati moves much faster than them. Now let's quickly go through question number 3 and then I hope you already have gotten the answer and I'm sure it's right because that's the only law possible there. And then let's move on to question number 4, which is read stanza 3 and then describe Makavati in 2 or 3 sentences of your own. Answer following this is, Makavati is a very cunning and cautious cat. He is tall and thin. His eyes are sunken in, his forehead is wrinkled and his head is dome-like. His coat is soiled his beard is not combed. The following question after question number 4 that is question number 5 is marking whether something is true or false. And since most of it is already there in the text, if you skim read the text you would get the answer. Question number 6 reads like this. Having read the poem, try to guess whether the poet is fond of cats. If so, why does he call Makavati a fiend and a monster? Moving on to question 7. Again, this tests our comprehending ability or the understanding of the poetry. So here the question goes like this. Has the poet used exaggeration for special effect? Find a few examples of it and read those lines aloud. So look at the answers falling on your screen. The following statements are examples of exaggeration. He is the bafflement of Scotland Yard, the flying squad's despair. Second one, his power of levitation. And third one, a fian in a feline shape, a monster of depravity. So all these three statements are something that is very non-human, something that cannot very commonly happen and thus is called an exaggeration for the criminal like Makavati. Now, 
we have come to the end of unit 3, but not until we end our class in a fun activity. Here is a task for you. Look at the dialogues given in the green box in page 52. For those who do not have the textbooks, the dialogue box is also appearing on your screen. What are those and why do you think it has been given? These are some of the examples of humorous writing in fantasy and as well as using the technique of personification. Now, here is a fun task for you which will help you in creative inclusive learning. Choose a favorite animal or a cartoon character of your choice and write a similar but lengthier dialogue using it with some humorous elements. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed knowing so much about the mysterious Macavity in this session. Until I meet you in the next class, see you children. Keep learning.